Hey everybody, this is Andrew and you are listening to Qlips. Holy moly, happy new year. It's 2019. I can hardly believe it. Where did the time go? It seems like in just a flash, 2018 flew by. And yeah, it's really amazing that it's already 2019. I want to wish everybody a happy new year. I hope that 2018 treated you all right. It's kind of funny. This is going to be a chatterbox episode, but I'm all alone today. And it's my own fault, really. Originally, I wanted to have a really fun year-end wrap-up episode with all the Qlips hosts together, talking about 2018 and our plans for 2019. But I just couldn't make it happen scheduling-wise. I've been so crazy busy these last couple of weeks. And so today, it's just me, unfortunately, but I hope that's all right with everyone. Today, I will talk about 2018, some of the highlights from the previous year. And I also want to talk about some of my plans and goals for the future in 2019 on a personal level and also some of the goals that we have here with Qlips. So that's the plan. And as always, if you'd like to study along with the study guide for this episode, then you can do that by downloading it from our website, which is www.qlips.com. And in the study guide, you'll find a transcript, detailed vocabulary, explanations, examples of how to use those expressions in real world situations, a quiz, and also some questions that you can use for discussing, at like a language exchange, or you could even use them to write a diary entry. So there's lots of good stuff in the study guide, and you can find it by visiting our website, qlips.com. So I'll kick things off by talking about 2018. And to be honest, I had a really, really good year. I had lots of new experiences. I got to visit new places, do new things. And no joke, I think it was one of the best years of my life. Now there's many things that I could talk about today, but I'm trying to keep this episode on the short side. So I thought I would just highlight three things from 2018 that I really enjoyed. And the first was traveling. Okay, traveling was one of the highlights of 2018 for me. I know we recorded a Qlips episode about my trip to Vietnam. So many of you know that I visited Vietnam. But I also got to go to many other countries like Japan, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. I also visited Canada, which is nothing too unusual from me since I'm Canadian after all. And I made a trip to Jeju Island, which is an island off the coast of South Korea. Many of you know that I live in South Korea and I have for a long time, but this was my first opportunity to visit Jeju Island and that was really great as well. So I visited many countries and actually I had been to all of those places before except for Jeju and Hong Kong. Some of my favorite things about traveling are meeting new people, experiencing new cultures, seeing things that I can't see at home, and of course trying new food too. But one of the really unique experiences that I had while I was traveling through Asia this summer was meeting Qlips listeners. I was honored to be able to meet several Qlips listeners in many different countries, in all of the countries I visited, really. Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Japan. This was a really special experience for me, and I was treated so nicely by everyone. They 
took me out for lunch or coffee and showed me around their country. And it was really, really awesome. So to all of you that I met this summer, thank you so much. I had an amazing time that I wouldn't have had if I wasn't able to meet with you. So thank you very much for that. And I had planned to record episodes specifically about each country I visited. And I shot lots of video as well while I was traveling with the intention of making podcasts and making content for our YouTube channel and Instagram account. But I was just so busy this fall, guys, that I haven't got around to that yet. If you would like to see that footage and hear the stories from my travels, send me an email and let me know. And maybe I can be convinced to do that. But it seems a little strange for me now to talk about an experience that happened five or six months ago. But if you're into it, let me know and I'll see what I can do. So to summarize, the highlight of 2018 for me was traveling to new places. And I'm excited because in just a little over a month, in early February, I will be visiting Finland and Spain. If you live in Helsinki, Barcelona, or Madrid, and you'd like to get together with me for a quick coffee while I'm traveling there in February, hit me up. It would be really cool to meet some more Qlips listeners while I'm abroad. Okay, on to point number two. Can you guess what it is? If you've been a loyal Qlips listener through 2018, maybe you'll know that another special experience for me in 2018 was running. Okay, running. Running in some official races. Now, running's been a hobby of mine for several years. Gosh, maybe at least four or five years now. But I really took things to a new level in 2018 by running in some officially organized races for the first time. So I completed two half marathons and three 10 kilometer races. And I was surprised to learn that I'm actually not that bad of a runner. I finished in the top 10 in four of the five races. And as I've shared with you before, I won some really interesting prizes. <laughs> it still makes me giggle every time I think about it. In Korea, where I ran these races, usually only the top three finishers win a cash prize. But if you finish in the top 10, you'll win a specialty product from the area. And because of this, I won some really you know, rather interesting <laughs> prizes like a box of eggplants, a huge bag of organic sea salt, and um, what was the other thing? Oh, and a big box of dried anchovy. So that was my haul from running in 2018. What I haven't conquered yet is the marathon. I think 2019 is the year that I will absolutely 100% sign up and complete a marathon. So 2019, look out. It's Andrew's time to shine. <laughs> All right. And the third highlight of 2018 for me is related to language learning. This is a podcast for English language learners. I'm not learning English. I'm already okay at English, but I am learning Korean since I live in Korea and I have lots of Korean friends, etc., etc., Looking back, it's really hard to judge the progress that you make with learning a language. I constantly get feedback from my friends saying that I'm getting better and better. And some of my friends say, oh, like even compared to a year ago, your leaps and bounds better than you were before. But I actually don't feel like that. So it's it's hard for me to say, oh, I made a lot of progress learning Korean this year. But what I will say is that I didn't quit. And I think that when you're doing something as challenging as learning a foreign language, especially if that language is really different from your native language, and I think you can't really find two languages that are more dissimilar than English and Korean. 
the important thing is just to keep going because if you quit, then 100% you're guaranteed failure. If you don't quit, then I can't say you'll ever reach a 100% fluency level, but you're going to continually get a little bit better every day. And eventually that will add up to, you know, being pretty decent at that language. For me, being fluent in Korean is obviously a goal, but I have no timeline for grabbing and reaching that goal. I just want to be able to do it at some point. If I reach a high level of Korean in the next two or three years, awesome. If it takes me 20 years, that's fine too. To me, the experience of learning a foreign language is mind-melting and mysterious and really beautiful in many ways. So I'm just trying to enjoy the process, not think too much about the end result. It's all about the journey, not the destination. Right, I think there is a proverb that goes like that. And so for me, not quitting Korean in 2018 and staying motivated throughout the whole year. Uh, and there's been, of course, times where I studied more intensely than others. This was a major accomplishment for me in 2018. And I think for all of you listening to this, you can probably pat yourself on the back as well if you are listening to this, that means you didn't quit learning English either. So congrats. All right. So in sum, the highlights of my year were traveling, running races for the first time, and not quitting Korean. I'm kind of highlighting so far the things that were successful this year. And I should also mention that there were a lot of things that I tried to do that I just couldn't do consistently over time. I have tried on and off meditating this year, doing yoga, working out in the gym, waking up early. These are all good habits and things that I would love to integrate into my everyday life. But for some reason or another, the habits just didn't stick. There were, there were periods of you know, two, three months where I was consistent in doing some of these things and then I just fell off the wagon. So in 2019, if I can, you know, integrate some of these things, meditation, yoga, waking up early, going to bed early <laughs> into my life consistently, I would be so happy. It just seems like there's not enough hours in the day to be able to do all the things that I want to do. But We'll see. Maybe maybe time management is another thing that I should try to do better in 2019. What else do I want to do for 2019? Well, to touch quickly upon language learning again, I think setting up an immersive environment is really, really, really important. And I want to try and do this better in 2019. Over the past year, I did try to cut out English in my life more so than ever before. So I started watching way more Korean TV. I even read a couple of Korean novels this year entirely in Korean. I've been reading Korean magazines, trying to speak in Korean more. But in 2019, I want to kick this up a notch to all Korean all the time. And for you guys listening, I think all English all the time is a great goal for you to set for yourself in 2019 too. What do I mean by all English all the time? Of course, this is impossible to do if you are a worker, right? You have to go to the office, you have to speak your language. But I'm talking more in your personal time. You know, when you come home from work and you want to relax for a couple hours and kick on Netflix and just chill, well, maybe you should do this using an English show instead of a show in your native language. Or a habit that I've been trying to get into is whenever I'm on the bus or the subway, I'm always listening to Korean content. I actually deleted the English podcast app that I always would listen to off my phone so that I don't have that temptation to listen to any English content. 
And going forward in 2019, I really want to try and take this to the next level and just erase English media from my life, which is sad to me because there are so many programs and podcasts that I love in English, but I think I can come back to them in a couple years when my Korean is really, really solid. So another goal for 2019, all Korean all the time. And I think you guys should think about doing all English all the time as well. My final goal for 2019 is more of a personal goal, and that is just to be a kinder, gentler person. I want to live a slower life, take things a little bit easier, try not to feel stressed about things as often as I do, try to think clearer and logically, and overall just live a healthier lifestyle. I know this sounds like such a stereotypical New Year's resolution, right? Like January 1st, I'm going to buy a gym pass, I'm going to live a healthier life. <laughs> it's not necessarily like that. I'm not talking about my physical well-being as much as my mental well-being. So just trying to be a softer, gentler, open-minded person who respects people and is nice to people. I want to say that's the kind of person that I am, but I really want to push that and try to grow on a personal level in 2019 as well. So that wraps up some of the major things that I did in 2018 and kind of what I'm thinking about doing in 2019. And just before I leave you here, I wanted to talk quickly about some of the QLIPS goals for 2019 because Man, am I ever excited about what we have planned for 2019 with Culips. In 2018, we really started expanding our social media presence. I've been making videos and images for Instagram and YouTube. That's been really fun and the response has been really great. So I definitely want to keep that up. And I could use your help here, everyone, if you have something specifically that you would like me to do uh, in a video format, then send me an email and let me know. You can always get in contact with us through our email address, which is contact at culips.com. The rest of the Culips team and I have been working really, really hard behind the scenes to provide more awesome study content for you all to practice English with. And I can't let the cat out of the bag quite yet, but I think everyone will be really pleased with some of the new features that we are going to be launching on the Culips website really, really soon. In 2018, we made over our website and upgraded it quite a bit. Thank you all for being patient with us while we did that. You know, nobody on the Culips team is a dedicated web developer. So we are always stressed and trying our best when, when we're doing upgrades to the website because it's not really our specialty, uh, web programming. But we're trying our best, and I think uh, the website is better now than ever before. I think the player that we have now is better than ever before. And soon, very, very soon, we'll be launching this new feature that I think you'll really, really enjoy. And as soon as that is launched, I will make sure to let everybody know so you can check it out. Finally, my last Culips goal for 2019 is to get better at responding to email. So many of you have recently been sending me emails, and I read every single one of them, but... Lately, I've just been so crazy busy, like I mentioned, that it's been really hard for me to respond to emails, specifically the emails where some of you ask questions about grammar or really small differences between word meanings. It's not that I don't want to answer these questions. It's just that researching and answering some of these types of emails takes a long time and I'm just so strapped for time. So I don't want you to stop the emailing, okay? Please feel free to send me some emails. I just want you to please be patient with me and I will definitely respond to every email that I get. It just sometimes takes me way longer than I want 
And so in 2019, I'm going to try and be more organized with my emailing so that I can respond to you all in a more timely manner. But it's really encouraging for me to hear from listeners around the world. It totally, totally, totally blows my mind that there are so many people from so many different countries studying with QLOOPS and listening to us and improving their lives by getting better at English with us. It's shocking, it's fantastic, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. So I think I've chatted to myself <laughs> enough for now. Maybe I am the OG chatterbox, who knows. Thank you all for tuning into this episode. Happy New Year, and I sincerely hope that you and your family have uh, a fantastic 2019. On behalf of me and the rest of the Culips team, thank you so much for your support over the past year. It really, really it means a lot to us that, that you're all here with us studying together, and we're all on this language learning journey together. We will continue to do our best in 2019, and I hope you will be there with us. Again, if you want to send me an email, the address is contact at culips.com, and our website is culips.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. YouTube, you name it, check us out, you'll find us. Culips English Podcast. That's it for now. We will be back soon with another Culips episode, and we'll talk to you then. Bye, everybody.